to the Reverend George Coleridge. Dear brother, I have often been surprised that mathematics, the quintessence of truth, should have found admirers so few and so languid. Frequent consideration and minute scrutiny have at length unravelled the cause, viz. that though reason is feasted, imagination is starved. Whilst reason is luxuriating in its proper paradise, imagination is warily travelling on a dreary desert. To assist reason by the stimulus of imagination is the design of the following production. In the execution of it, much may be objectionable. The verse, particularly in the introduction of the ode, may be accused of unwarrantable liberties, but they are liberties equally homogeneal with the exactness of mathematical disquisition and the boldness of Pindaric daring. I have three strong champions to defend me against the attacks of criticism. The novelty, the difficulty, and the utility of the work. I may justly plume myself that I first have drawn the nymph Mathesis from the visionary caves of, abstract, of, of abstracted idea and caused her to unite with harmony. The first born of this union I now present to you, with interested motives indeed, as I expect to receive in return the more valuable offspring of your muse. Thine ever, STC. This is now, this was erst, proposition the first, and problem the first. On a given finite line, which must no way incline, to describe an equilateral tri, A N G L E. Now let A B be the given line, which must no way incline. The great mathematician makes this requisition that we describe an equilateral tri angle on it. Aid us, reason, aid us, wit. From the centre A, at the distance AB, describe the circle BCD, at the distance BA, from B, the centre, the round ACE, to describe boldly venture. Third postulate C, and from the point C, in which the circles make a poffer, cutting and slashing one another. Bid the straight lines a journeying go. C, A, C, B, those lines will show. To the points which by A, B are reckoned, and postulate the second. For authority ye know, A, B, C, triumphant shall be. An equilateral triangle, not Peter Pinder Carp, not Zoilus can wrangle. Because the point A is the centre of the circular BCD, and because the point B is the centre of the circular ACE, AC to AB and BC to BA harmoniously equal forever must stay. Then CA and BC both extend the kind hand to the basis a B unambitiously joined in equality's band, but to the same powers when two powers are equal, my mind forbades the sequel, my mind does some celestial impulse teach and equalizes each to each. Thus C A with B C strikes the same sure alliance that C A and B C had with a, B, before, and in mutual affiance, 
none attempting to soar above another. The unanimous three, CA and BC and AB, all are equal, each to his brother, preserving the balance of power so true. Ah, the like would the proud autocratics do, at taxes impending not Britain would tremble, nor Prussia struggle her fear to dissemble, nor the mammoth sprung white, the great Muslim, would stain his divan with urine, the soft-flowing daughter of fright. But reign your stallion in, too daring nine, should empires bloat the scientific line, or with dishevelled hair all madly do ye run, for transport that your task is done, for done it is, the cause is tried, and proposition gentle maid, who soothly asked, stern demonstration's aid, has proved her right, and ABC of angle three is shown to be of equal side, and now our weary steed to rest in fine, tis raised upon AB, the straight, the given line.